A very common question I get asked is, what is the best way for my corporation to pay me? Well, let's get into that. But first, if you find these videos helpful, a like and a comment will go a long way to paying it forward. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And please keep this in mind. I own a CPA firm called Swain CPA and we are actively taking on small business clients. So if you're a small business owner and I'm not your accountant, why don't you book a chat with me and let's see what we can do about that. Okay, there are three main ways you can draw money from your small business corporation. First, you can draw on your shareholder account. Second, you can pay yourself a salary. Or third, you can pay yourself a dividend. And each of these ways is pretty different from the other and some are connected and some of the reporting required is quite similar. But not to worry because I'm gonna get into each method in depth. You'll be an old pro by the end of this video. Okay, the first way. You can just draw money from your shareholder account. This just means that you can cut yourself a check or just transfer money online from your corporate account to your personal bank account. It's pretty simple. Now, is that all there is to it? Possibly, but more likely no. So when it's just that simple, well, if your company owes you money, say because you paid some bills with personal funds on its behalf, or you may have rolled in some assets from your sole proprietorship when you first incorporated, and the company issued you an IOU. In a nutshell, if the company owes you, you can just go right ahead and pay yourself back, and that is the end of the story. No further reporting is required. But what happens if the company didn't owe you money and you just draw funds from the company account to your personal account? Well, think of it like this. It's kind of like drawing on a line of credit. You now owe your company, and if you keep a good set of books, you can basically look at your shareholder account anytime, and if that account is in a debit balance, you personally owe your company. If it's in a credit balance, your company owes you. Now, you might think, well, who cares if I owe my company? I'm good for it. I'm gonna tell you who cares. The CRA, and why do they care? Well, it totally makes sense, actually. Just drawing money from your corporation doesn't formally get reported to the CRA's income. Now, they don't mind you carrying a balance for one cycle of year end, so long as you report a notional interest benefit on your personal tax return, but they're gonna wanna see that balance paid off before the next year end cycle, or they could get cranky. Now, if they get cranky, here's what they can do. They can say, because you didn't pay that loan back before the second year end cycle, we're gonna impose a personal benefit equal to the net monies drawn and we're gonna make that effective the date that you drew the monies, not when we got cranky. And because that will have been more than a year in cycle, you'll be looking at non-deductible arrears interest. Now, when you eventually pay back the loan, they will give you a tax deduction on your personal tax return, but this doesn't erase the arrears interest. Now, you don't actually have to pay back the money you owe your corporation in hard dollars. You can designate it as either dividend or salary for which you will have to pay the tax on, but you don't have to actually pay back the loan to your company. It kind of sets you straight with the CRA and when you think about it, it sort of sets you straight with your company because you're just formalizing the remuneration that you took as an advance against your shareholder loan. Capiche? Now, if this is still doesn't make sense to you, just book a call, I'm gonna get you there. So the second way to draw money, well, it's just a payroll check. This is by far the easiest way to make sure that the money you're gonna owe the CRA is paid up and you are current with them. So understand that a paycheck is tax deductible to your corporation. Therefore, the net income of the corporation will be lower by your salary and it'll pay less corporate tax. You will be required to remit statutory deductions off of your paycheck on a monthly basis. Now, because you are the owner, you are not required to remit EI premiums. Although there is a program for self-employed people under EI, but you need to opt into it and I'm not going there today. But you will withhold CPP and federal taxes as a minimum. So once this is done, taxes directly related to what you have withdrawn will essentially put you square with the CRA. This option lends itself well to people that like to keep things nice and simple when planning for their tax bill. This option also lends itself well to people that want to pay into the CPP plan. But as the owner, there is a cost to the company for paying into the plan, which is a dollar for dollar of the CPP withheld from your paycheck. Salary from your company is also considered earned income. Now, why does this matter? 
there's quite a few things that require earned income in respects to personal taxes within the Tax Act. Earned income is the basis for determining the amount of RSP you can contribute. If you have childcare expenses, you need earned income to deduct that. You need earned income to claim moving expenses. And these are just a few that I thought of off the top of my head, but there's more. The point is, sometimes we want to report earned income. So good planning with your accountant ahead of time will ensure that you utilize all the benefits you deserve according to your life situation. The third way to withdraw money is to declare a dividend. So what is a dividend? Really, it's just the distribution of the after-tax profits that your company earned and you decide the amount. For example, if your company made $100,000 in profit and paid $10,000 in tax, it is left with $90,000 of after-tax profits. Of this profit, you decide you'd like to declare $50,000 of it as a dividend and retain the other $40,000 of profit in the company. That's all a dividend is. Notice I said that a dividend is not deducted from the profit of the company to determine the taxes. It's not tax deductible. You will then pay personal tax on that dividend. Now, personal taxes on dividends are not quite as high as normal income like salary or interest income, but don't get excited about this. Remember, those kinds of incomes are deductible to the corporation while dividends aren't. For the most part, and there are provincial differences throughout Canada, but for the most part, there is virtually no real difference in the total taxes factoring the total sum of both corporate and personal taxes between deciding on a dividend versus payroll remuneration strategy, or at least at the time of the making of this video. You see, tax tables change from year to year, never too drastically, but sometimes the cumulative changes over time will cause some imbalance in how much tax, say, a regular employee might pay versus a corporate small business owner. But you wanna believe that when it tips in the small business owner's favor, I'm on that like stink on a monkey. Now, sometimes people think that it might be a pain in the butt to declare dividends every time we wanna extract money from our corporations. No, no, it's not like that at all. You can just go ahead and take out of the company what you need to live if you want, and we'll just go ahead and tally up all the withdrawals at the end of the year and do one declaration to square you up. But a very big warning here, and this happens to all of us, me included. Be darn sure you're keeping track of your withdrawals and be mindful of the corporate and personal taxes you'll be looking at when year end comes. Remember, dividends do not have any withholding tax requirements, like a salary, for Canadian residents anyway. The CRA does have an installment payment program and you really should use this to avoid arrears interest, but they don't penalize you for not paying into installments and therefore lots of people don't bother, but they can get overextended, just like a credit card. So you're responsible for putting enough money aside at the end of the year to pay both your personal and corporate taxes. So you wanna do some good planning with your accountant. Now here's another interesting characteristic of dividend income. It doesn't attract CPP premiums. So when you think about it, you can get out of the CPP program altogether if you want to. But the CPP is not a tax, it's a pension plan. So you're thinking it should go more like this. If I'm a small business owner, I'm paying double the CPP premiums as my buddy that works down at the plant as an employee is paying. If I invest those premiums myself, I may be able to do better than the Canada Pension Plan, and I may not. But what you don't do is go out and buy an ATV with all these new found money. Sorry, but this is for people that have discipline and maybe some confidence and believe they can earn better than the Canada Pension Plan. And some people can, believe me. Now, there is a really cool way to withdraw money from your corporation that is way out of scope for this video, but it's a neat way to get money out at half the tax rate. And I'll do a video about this complex maneuver in the future, but if you can't wait, you need to book a call with me and I'll take you through it and we'll see if this is something you may qualify for. Here's a condition though, you need to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in your company and you really should have a personal need for it. Well, that's it, and that was a lot. So if you stay to the end, you're one hell of a serious small business owner. And if you're not a client, then you really should be because Swain clients are very serious small business owners and we're very serious accountants. So book a chat. Until next time, stay wealthy, my friends.